Well, welcome to Tea Time. That's right, Miss Liz is here, and it is a Monday, so you know what that means. It means it's a rescheduled Tea Time. Uh, the The official day for Tea Times are on Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m., but when I do a Tea Time on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's usually a rescheduled Tea Time, surprise Tea Time, or a returning guest Tea Time. So Miss Liz does all of the different kind of teas out there. So tonight I have the amazing Janice Burnett in the house, and she's an author and a former reading specialist. We're going to talk about inspiring children through Bible study, Bible stories. Uh, and we're going to get to know a little bit more about Janice and who she is. So before we get started, we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel, and we're going to get you to ring that little doorbell, because what does Miss Liz have to offer? Miss Liz has to offer you over 300 different interviews interviews from all walks of life from all over the world that you can enjoy. So if one tea time doesn't resonate with you, the next one will, I guarantee you that. So let's get started with the disclaimer and then some bio on Janice. And then we're going to get Janice in here. We're going to spill you a tea of two of to enable and affirm today. That is the tea that we are serving tonight on Tea Time with Miss Liz. Disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz myself is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions. For some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Ms. Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I will respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all tea time shows are done on Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless it's a surprise tea time, returning tea time, or a rescheduled tea time. So now a little bit on my guest. Well, who is Janice? Well, Janice Burnett. She, Janice's story is one of the one of dedication, passion, and unwavering commitment to, to education and community. From a young girl reading by the age of five to a seasoned read, reading specialist, Janice has continued to sprinkle her love for reading and teaching wherever she she's gone. Through her unique journey from the mountains of North Carolina to the halls of Western Carolina. University, Janice has inspired countless children and adults alike. Her experiences from being a, a band member to a church organized organist and even a radio station co-owner are as rich and diverse as many stories she loves to tell. So now let, let me get Janice in here and let's find out a little bit more about Janice. So let's get some tea spilling. So you know what to do, guys. Keep sharing these tea times with all of your loved ones. So welcome, Janice. Glad to be here. Thank you for your time. So Janice, tell me, who was Janice as a little girl and who was Janice now? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I think I was always kind of interested in learning. Um, I was pretty active as a kid, a tomboy, you'd say. I had an older brother who taught me how to play sports, and I've done that all my life. Uh, it was a good start with him. Uh, he was the one actually ta taught me to read because I was two years younger. When he came home from first grade, he taught me everything he knew. So that's how I learned to read early. And so I've loved it ever since. And so becoming a reading teacher just kind of fell in line with that. 
And I love it, reading teachers, right? Because I find that reading is missing in today's world. Yeah, I still like that paper in my hand. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> that hardcover book. Right. It's well, and you get to see and imagine the illustrations and all of that as well, right? The pictures and images that are shared in books. Uh, so, Janice, let's talk about your books, uh, the Bible stories that inspire children. And how did you come up with that book? Um, well, I had written just small stories uh, for my children at school. If I could, if I couldn't find something they were interested in, this is like first grade level. And I would write something to say about horses or something that they liked that I couldn't find a book for. And then when I had grandchildren, I also wrote small books for them, things about their first day of school or the pets they had, that type of thing, and just gave them something to help them learn to read and enjoy it. Well, this time I needed a story to use with my preschoolers at church. And I couldn't find something that was written on the level that I could present to them in a readable format. But there are lots of Bible stories out there for children, but they have several lines on a page or it's a complicated story. You can read to them and they could understand it, but it's not something they could read themselves. And so I decided just to write a story from the Bible. And I wrote the story about Jesus calming the storm. And when I presented it to my kids at church, I talked about the pictures first and they got the gist of the story. And then I let them read it with me. And then I pointed to the word and they actually read it. And so I, I thought, wow, <laughs> it works with kids at church, not just at school. And so I gave the, each of them a copy and let them take it home with them and read it to their parents or whatever. And I talked to my daughter about it and she says, you ought to publish some of this stuff. And so that's where it started. So how did you get the title, Jesus Calming the Storm? The title? Uh, straight from the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Something that uh, the children could relate to. Uh, the cover of my book has a picture of a child reading, and he's picturing a ship. On the, So that was kind of the theme of the book, I guess, because I like to stir a child's imagination what it would be like to be back in Jesus' time and being on a ship and what are you going to do if there's a storm? So it was it was kind of going from there. So, so Janice, I want to take you back to the age of five. So what books were you reading at the age of five? What, what was your favorite books? I guess one of my first ones was The Little Red Hen. <laughs> oh, that one, I, have, I haven't heard of that book in a long time. Yes, it was one of the first books I read to my son when I had him, too. So <laughs> I, I remember that one very vividly. Um, at, when I was a child, and I don't remember exactly how old, but I'd say five, six, seven, along in there, the Belks store downtown had a bookshelf, and they they had all those little golden books there. Oh, yeah. And my mom told me that the store owners knew us and that they would let us stand there and read books while she shopped. Oh. So, so I, I remember them. I remember those little books. Those are amazing little books, and they were easy reads. Mm -hmm. A lot of repetition and, you know, familiar lines, that kind of thing. Yeah. So as you got older, uh, Janice, and you became a reading teacher, were you like working in the library or were you doing reading classes? Like how did how did that work? Um, I worked in the public schools and much of my time, about half of my career, I'd say I worked with struggling readers. It was remedial reading or beginning readers who were having trouble. And um, those were with small groups, say five or six, or with the reading program, it was a very intense one-on-one -on -one program. So that was really impressive that the, the way that worked and how effective it was. Um, but even when I went in the classroom and taught 30 kids at a time, I could still use some of those reading strategies. And the interesting thing was some of the children I taught at fifth grade were those I had as first grade struggling readers, and they were now reading on grade level. That was a blessing just to see that transformation in those years. So, Dennis, you've always worked with like the elementary children? Elementary, yes. So ages uh, four to seven, correct? Mostly. Um, I did work with up through eighth grade. And then after retirement, 
I actually tutored uh, some students in high school, but that was not in reading. It was general math and other subjects. So I want to ask you about struggling when you're reading. What what causes a struggle? I think a lot of it is background. Um, maybe not being read to as much as other children, because that makes a big difference with a child is to get them interested in books and knowing what words are and what it looks like on a page, even before you start learning your letters. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things. Uh, and the reason I say that is because the children that I worked with at first grade level, once we started into books, it was amazing the progress they made. Um, it's just the exposure and giving them something to work with. The reason I have the word train, I mean, uh, the word to uh, enable, I was thinking of training, but then enable, is that as a teacher, it's not just imparting knowledge, it's giving them a basis to keep learning. And so what I tried to do as a reading teacher is not just have them memorize words, but have them to think about what they're reading, predict what will come next, check it and see if it's what it really says, that kind of thing. So they can expand their knowledge and go further with it on their own. Yeah, because I, I, I feel like when you memorize things, are you actually taking it in? Are you actually understanding it? Or are you just memorizing it to repeat it? Mm -hmm. Right, I think that's true a lot of times. So Janice, when when you're reading to the reading to your grandchildren and your children, what was the your most uh, special moment with them? Was it when they said thank you for the story? Was it the beginning of the story? Was it getting comfy for the story? What what was it? One of my favorite times reading to my grandchildren is when my grandson was I don't know maybe third grade I don't remember for sure. But he was he was reading a book that he had checked out at school and it was kind of a adventure disaster survival kind of story and i was keeping the kids that weekend while their parents were away on a mission trip and we stayed up to two o'clock reading that book <laughs> <laughs> but we ain't telling mom and dad right <laughs> but it was a friday night we could do it but uh we read that book. He read a page, I'd read a page back and forth, and we just couldn't put it down. Oh, I, I think it's really important to read to children. Uh, I think it's really important that we get that connection to story time and sharing. And I, I like that you did that one page at a time because it was a bonding time as well, right? Connecting oh, yeah. time. Very much so, yes. So do you do, you do that as a teacher? How do you mean readings to children? Of course. Like the connection, like when you're reading a story, do you get the, the student to read one page and then teacher read the next page or? Oh, um, it depends on the situation. Um, when I was doing the one-on-one -on -one with first graders, uh, I did not read the book to them. I gave them some basis to start with and then it was on their uh, end to interpret and work, to work it out. And I would just give them it, uh, encouragement along the way kind of thing. Uh, but as a classroom teacher, like I, t I spent some of my career in fifth grade and I would read to my kids every day. We had a novel or something that we were doing or something that applied to one of our lessons. I'd fill it in with some kind of inf extra information. But I read to the kids every day and I loved it. And I think they did too. They responded to the stories. Well, and I think it opens the imagination as well, right? Getting told stories and getting involved in the story, right? Oh, yes. And I think back in my school days, my first grade teacher read a book to us that became one of my favorites, of course. And then I can remember my fourth grade teacher reading to us and the book she read became one of my favorites. So I thought if that worked for me, it probably worked for other students too. And I hope that they would get into some of the things that I enjoyed and they remember it for a lifetime. Absolutely. So Janice, now I want to go back to your book, the, the Bible stories. So how many stories are in your book? Okay. This book contains three. They're very short because I wanted them readable, accessible, not too much to put on a child at one time. And they're, they're written specifically for a beginning reader. There's only a few words on a page 
the size of the font is large. The spacing is there, so you're not crowding words together. They can separate them easily. Um, the vocabulary is like predictable to some degree, but it's not just words, it's telling a story. So they have to think ahead, you know, what's going to happen in the story? What might happen next? Why did that happen? You know, it's, a, it's an involvement book, not just uh, factual or whatever. So, um, I just go ahead. So it's kind of like a they they decide the outcome of the story. Excuse me. So do they decide the outcome of the story? Oh well, no, not exactly. But I want them before they turn the page. What do you think? Oh, okay. So they're predicting okay. what might be said on the next page, um, and it kind of gives them an idea of what the words might say, and then they can. Uh, read what they think it is, and then check and see if it really said that by knowing some of their letters and that type of thing. And, and you said the font is really big, so it's right. good for for children that have visual impairment in that as well, correct? Well, and also for young children, it helps them to separate word from word, and it's not just a whole line of letters. So the, oh. the space between the words is important too. Oh, I just learned something new. Like... Mm -hmm. So spacing the letters helps you read better? Well, it helps you separate words. That's the big thing. So that they know when they look at the word little, it's different from the word the that came right before it or something. You know, they, they can recognize, like if they were reading something like the little dog and they said something about, what's it, what else starts with D? The? the little duck. <laughs> then they could check and see if that word is right. Oh, so that's, that's interesting. That's a big, big deal. Mm -hmm. I, always, I always love when I learn something from my guests because there, there's always room to grow and learn more, you know? Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about bedtime stories. Um, do you feel that it's important to re read to your children before they go to sleep? I always did. Yeah, I read everything from Bible stories to fairy tales to ventures of um, um, Little House on the Prairie, you know, all that kind of stuff. Oh, oh those were the good ones. <laughs> another reading story about my children, though. I was reading um, Charlotte's Web to my children when they were small. And my, my son's three years older than my girls. But... Um, he was probably about six and they were a little bit younger, but they loved the story at the beginning. And when it got to the part where the, the animals started talking, my son gave up, says, I don't like that story anymore. It's not real. Oh yeah. They were really into it until that part. So do you find by reading stories that it opens up the, the airway to communicate as well? Right, to have that conversation of what do you think of this character? What do you think of the storyline? Do, do you ever get into a good conversation when you're reading a story? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, I think it's more than anything, more than the story, it's a bonding time because that child has your undivided attention. And it's a very positive um, situation where they have your undivided attention. It's not one they begged for, it's one they get because they're your child. And it's very special to have that time together. Well, I think bonding time is really important and I think we need to bring it back. I, you know, we need more bonding time with our grandchildren and our children and, you know, just getting that conversation going. And that's what tea time is all about is getting that open discussion going and using words. So the words that you gave me for your tea, Janice, was to enable and affirm. So why those three words? You told me why for the to and enable. So why the affirm? Okay. I, I was thinking along my teaching lines there, not just life in general, but along my teaching lines. Enable means that you're not, as I say, teaching is not just imparting knowledge, but you enable the child to build on what they know to expand their learning. And then when they get it, you affirm it and say, yes, that's, that's exactly right. I'll give an example of that. Teaching uh, my first graders, like I say, it was one-on-one, -on -one, just a single child. I had a child who had a really difficult home situation. 
And I was told before I taught her, be careful how you touch the child. She's very offended. And so I just sat beside her. I didn't pat her on the back or anything like that, like I might nor normally do to a child. And I was teaching her one day and she did something in her reading and she knew she had done it well. And she jumped up and gave me a hug. I could have cried. That's special. Well, I think there's so many children out there that are just lacking that, that bonding time, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So as a teacher, can you give me a, a moment that outstands everything that you taught? Is there one extra special moment in your life of teaching that stands out? Mm, that had to be one right there. Um, goodness, it's hard to come up with a, a moment, so to speak. Um, I think one of the blessings is that when you see your children later and they come up to you and said, you made a difference. And because of you, I like to read because of you, this, you know, whatever is, is nice to know you made a difference in their life. I think teachers are really important and I have a grade seven teacher who made a huge impact in my life. So I know exactly where you're coming from Janice with that, you know, you reach out 20, 30 years later and you say, thank you for remembering me or thank you for seeing me or understanding me. Right. Uh, it's deeply important. Um, I, I, I want to thank you for your services as a teacher because teachers don't get enough appreciation. So thank you for that as you know, teaching in a church, teaching in schools, you know, teacher, teachers are really deeply important and we don't give enough appreciation to teachers. So if anyone out there has a teacher that has left a moment in your heart and made a difference, share that in the comments and share that with Miss Liz. I'd like to know where all the teachers are and maybe we can give a special shout out to all these incredible teachers out there. So Janice, I want to get into the other two stories. So you gave me story one, Jesus calming the storm. So could you tell me a little bit about the other two stories? Okay. One of them is about Jesus meeting the woman at the well. And that's kind of a tough story for children, but I wrote it because I had used it with my kids at church fairly recently. And the way I wrote it was the conversation between Jesus and the woman in uh, he would say something and she'd say, what? You know, if the story, she didn't believe it. And then he'd tell her something else and she'd say, what? And she said a little bit louder. And then when he tells her who he is, she says, what? And in the writing, the words get bigger and bigger as she says it louder and louder. And she drops her pot and runs off to tell everybody. So I tried to make it as child-friendly conversation as I could. Um, but that's one example with a woman that well. And another one was the story about feeding the 5,000, which is a story that most children really relate to. Um, all of them know what it's like to be hungry. They come in <laughs> to where we are and they say, I didn't have a good breakfast. I want my snack now. And we, <laughs> we have to have it you know, at certain times. But they can all relate to that. But I use some numbers in that one, like the number 5,000 which would be a new number for small kids to learn. But also when they're counting the loaves of bread and the two fish, have those numbers in the book. So things like that that actually help the child in other ways other than just words. And uh, another thing I did is at the end of the story, when uh, they have all those baskets left over, I wrote the word, wow, because it's something special. And at the end of the storm, when the storm stopped, I put, awesome. They love that. <laughs> I, it's in, empowering words, right? And they're really simple. And we don't hear them often. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Janice, Janice, do you have the book there with you? I do. Could I see it? Okay. This way. Okay. There we go. So this is the incredible book that we're talking about tonight on Tea Time. So Bible stories for beginning beginning readers. Uh, and I, I just love the image. Uh, it can you hold it up a little higher, Janice. The little boy is just reading a book. And, you know, it's really simple image on top. And, you know, it brings back the, the bonding time of reading stories. And I love that you put numbers in and shapes in and, you know, some fun in there. Um, 
so can we get a little sneak peek of a little inside of the book, Janice? Okay, let's see. Here's an example of a oh. page there where the he Jesus tells the disciples to go and feed the people, but they have no money and no food. So the words and the pictures supplement each other. Very uh, simple images, too. I like it. And as I said, a few words on a page with a large font. And then they spot the boy that has food. He has food. And then here's the page I was telling you about with the numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Loaves of bread. And then the, get my book in the right place. One, two, fish. Um, the one I was telling you about, the Samaritan woman. I called it Jesus Gives Living Water. And here she comes with her water pot. He asks her for a drink of water. She says, what? Because if you know the story, you normally most people would not speak to her. It was unusual for a man to speak to her. So she says, what? And then he says, I can give you living water. And she says, what? And when he says, you'll never be thirsty, she says, what again? But she says it even louder. And then when he tells her he's the Messiah. A big white water and drops her water pot. So the repetition and this gets the child into the story. They kind of feel what she's feeling like, what? Even more information, what? So that's, that's the idea of the book. I, I love it. It's very simple and very easy and playful. It's also educational. Uh, I really like the layout of it. And awesome job, Janice. I enjoy doing it. And the other thing is I wanted the pictures to be realistic, not cartoon-like characters, because I wanted them to realize that this is from the Bible, that it is a true story. It really happened. It's real people. And so I did not want cartoon characters in my book. No, oh, I like it. I, I, it's almost like a elementary school workbook. Well, you know, <laughs> where you have the, <laughs> but you come from a, a teaching background, right? Mm -hmm. I love the way that the bread and, and and that as you can count the numbers, right? So it's an easy read. It's a playful book, and it it's, it shows you how to educate the mind as well as you're reading. Uh, you know, count count the breads, count the fish and it, i like it it's playful i i like we we need no more books like that um, um, i'm a grandma so i'm just loving uh, that book <laughs> well even if you were using it to read to the children i think you could probably enjoy it and have some fun with it and put the expressions in that type of thing like when they're uh the, the you're on the ship and it's you know in the storm and they're saying jesus wake up <laughs> that kind of thing <laughs> I like the titles. The titles are nice and simple too, and they give a meaning as well, right? Uh -huh. Jesus calming the storm. Like there's so much storms in life that you know, uh, it's very simple. Uh, I, I I like it. It's really. I had no idea how the book looked and that. I I had the cover, guys. And so I got to see the inside tonight along with all of you guys out there. So oh, if okay. anybody has any questions or or comments that they'd like to share with us, uh, be sure to. Send them to Miss Liz private DMs or put it in the comment section here. We're, we'd love to hear from you. But Janice, I want to get into music because you oh. learned how to play music at a young age. So let's talk about how important music is as well. Because reading and music are two things that are important. And reading notes on the, on the music paper and that as well. So how old were you when you started playing music? I uh, started at age nine. Oh, wow. Took piano lessons. Um, so I began playing at church probably about the time I was in sixth grade, um, and was playing pretty much, but, um, I remember my music teacher telling me it was like reading. So you're not looking at one note at a time. You're looking at the whole line and you're looking ahead to see what's coming ahead. So I think about it every time I'm trying to play, play a new piece of music, <laughs> I'm trying to look ahead, see what's coming up. <laughs> 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 kind of like a run, right? Like, let's run to the uh, next page. <laughs> I'll run here and see what happens. 
<laughs> right? It's like running the notes. <laughs> so how long have you been playing piano? Since the age of nine? Yeah, I was in third grade um, and been playing ever since. Um, I took lessons until I was in high school and my teacher was older and was not able to teach anymore. So I stopped taking lessons, but I've learned a lot more since then. Just playing in churches and having, say, choir directors that would give me a piece of music that might not be easy, you know, that I'd, I'd work on. So I've I've grown in my <laughs> musical abilities, I think, even since taking lessons. So have you passed that music talent on to your children and grandchildren? I would like to hope so. All three of my children were in high school band, so they all play as musical instruments. My son also has uh, picked up guitar and plays that more, well, just better than I play piano. <laughs> he just really does well, well with guitar. And uh, one of my daughters plays a French horn, the other plays saxophone. Um, my grandson plays, he's starting band now, he's playing trombone. My granddaughter is playing guitar in her church praise band. So I think it kind of goes with it. <laughs> I think, I think Janice's family's got their own little music band going on here. <laughs> yes, we've, we've enjoyed doing some music together, but we don't do it often enough together. So Janice, I want to talk about church and missionary because you've done a lot of mission work as well. Yeah. So could you share a little bit about that for anybody that might be interested on in knowing more about missions and how they work and all that? Right. Um, I got into this, I guess, even as a child, because we had an organization at our church that was for girls to learn about missions. It was called Girls in Action. And we would do community things to minister to people, like go to nursing homes or go to places where people couldn't get out of their homes to go to church. We'd go to their homes and do things for them. Just various uh, ministries like that, even as a young person. My mother was a nurse and she worked at a home for um, mentally handicapped children. And so we got going there and helping children with different projects and working with the, the, the uh, patients there. That's when I learned to play accordion because we would go Christmas caroling and we needed some accompaniment. So my mom bought me an accordion when I was about, I think, sixth grade, long in there. And so I've been playing that since too. But that's mostly when I use that. It's like when we're going outside somewhere and I need that accompaniment to play accordion with the songs. Um, but as far as missions goes, uh, my first really big mission trip, I guess, was to Brazil. Oh, wow. But, yeah, that's the first time I'd ever been on a plane, too. But my husband and I went there in the early 90s um, and went to Sao Paulo. It was very, I'd say, eye-opening, but a tense time for me because I'd never been out of the country. I wasn't in a situation before where I didn't speak the language. That was really tough for me to feel comfortable. But we had an interpreter with us most of the time and really made some good friends there. And it really was a blessing. Um, we just, before we came home, we just talked to each other and said, we've finally done something well with our lives. You know, it just really made that much of an impact. When our children were just ending high school, we decided we wanted to do something with them as a family before they left home and do some kind of trip. So in our church, which is a small church, we probably had 50 people on Sunday morning or something, but we had a good youth team. Three of the kids were ours, but we had several more. And we put them together and worked on a project, a practice several days, weeks, and we went to South Carolina to Hunting Island and did a day camp for kids at the campground there. That was a really special time to have our whole family working together on that particular trip when they were friends too. Um, since then, my daughter um, got her degree in religious education and was able to spend several, well, summers in South America and China and different places that she's been on mission trips. And so she got me to go to Africa with her. I can't believe now that I actually did that. Just the two of us. <laughs> uh, 
but she had a friend that was over there and needed some workers to supplement some things they were doing. She said, we'll go. And she told, call, called me and says, mom, let's go. And we did. <laughs> so uh, I have had the opportunity to do that. And with my church, of course, going to Moldova a couple of times. Oh. That was very, uh, very sweet time. Um, learning to speak a little bit of Romanian and even less Russian. <laughs> but um, we speak about the music. That's been important to me, too, because in Brazil, I learned several songs in Portuguese that I could come back and use when I'm teaching about that with my children. I learned some songs in Romanian that I could use when I was teaching about Europe. So uh, it's been a fun time with language. I took French in high school, but I think I know about as much Romanian and Portuguese as I'm French. <laughs> but, but languages are interesting to me, and I, I love to sing songs in different languages. Well, I think it's important to learn all the different cultures and languages as well, right? Uh, and it, I think it's it, it gives you a, an understanding of different uh, traditions as well, right? Through the notes and music and reading. Uh, did you learn how to read in different languages as well, Janice? Um, some. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not fluent in any of them, but I like to explore them. And I, I know enough to make my children feel like I'm smart. <laughs> well, that's always a good thing, right, Janice? <laughs> I know, just enough. <laughs> so uh, what age were you when you got your, um, I'm just looking here. Do, 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 do. Uh, you got your early, mid middle grade education. So what age were you when you got that? I was 20, 21. I graduated in three years. And got that. And then uh, I did a year's internship work at the same time that I got my master's. It was a special, uh, is a program through the university that they offered for teachers who wanted to do that intense work for a year. And we were supervised by the university and did a lot of videos of our classes. And the professors would actually come out to the school and work with us, that type of thing as an internship for a year and I got my master's through that. So how long does it take to get your master's? It takes longer now, I think, but I did that within a year. Oh. Yeah, it was one year of really intense study and research. And we actually used our children that we worked with as our research project. And how long does it take to become a teacher? Now, I would say, I think it's still a four year degree but with the master's, it would take longer. And I think most teachers now go ahead and work and then get their master's as they, you know, maybe during the summers. So they, they do their summer schooling. Oh, I did some of that too. <laughs> well, Janice, I want to talk to you now about the, the teacher's corp. What's the teacher's corp? Oh, teacher core. Teacher core was the program I was talking about. That was that intensive master's level program that they did with us and uh, worked with us in the schools. We had uh, special training like they wanted us to teach a certain way and we would do that and try it out and see how it worked with our kids. It was kind of an experimental program, but um, I learned a lot through that about actually how to work with kids and what helps children learn, asking questions instead of telling everything, this kind of thing. Um, it was a very worthwhile program. Well, I mean, it sounds like you had an amazing time learning a lot, growing a lot. Uh, are you still learning a lot today? Oh, I'm continually learning. <laughs> I'm, learning <laughs> I'm learning that three-year-olds sometimes make their own rules. <laughs> right? And then better to go with the flow than it is to make your our rules for them so just let them kind of lead but then guide them through what they're wanting to do absolutely so Janice I want to get into your 540 broadcasting company okay, what is that all I am now <laughs> <laughs> so when did that start and how how's that going for you okay um my husband worked in broadcasting out of high school he just, that was what he was interested in, and then went to uh, broadcasting school in Atlanta, came back and worked here in Bryson City, then went in the military, 
And when he was in the military, he was a Marine and was sent to Vietnam. But when he got to Vietnam, they needed someone to work at the American Forces Vietnam Network. So he applied and got his job there at the radio station, TV station there in Da Nang. And that's what his service was while he was in Vietnam, was working in TV and radio. So when he came back home, um, he was invited to come here to Silva to do uh, broadcasting. And so he worked there for several years and then things changed. He did other things, uh, even pastored churches for a while. We did for about 20 years. But this station went off the air. Um, it was It's a small town and the person that owned it didn't think it was worth it to keep it, I guess. So the county commissioners came to Roy and says, would you get it back on the air for us? And so we did. We bit the bullet. So after I retired, this is my retirement job. I keep the books. So what do you like about the radio? Oh, it's it's an interesting thing. I, just, I found out a lot about how it works, all about towers and all this electronic stuff. And the... Um, I helped my husband broadcast ball games. That's oh, kind of interesting. Yeah, we do the high school ball games here in Silva. And uh, so I knew a lot about sports and I just decided I'd like to do that and I just go with him. I like it, ball games. Mm -hmm. A good baseball game, right? A baseball game's good too. I've helped him some on those. He's got another guy that likes to do baseball or football. So if, if that guy's not there, I go. But most of the time he has somebody. I usually help him with the basketball part. So and do you guys play any music on the radio? Oh, yes. Uh, the format here in Silva is like adult contemporary. But this, we also have the station in Bryson City, the, the one he started with as a teenager. And we do uh, classic country there. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, he has... Uh, special bluegrass and uh, gospel music on weekends. So so on, a, a, anybody wanted to listen to that radio station, what what channel is it? Okay, the one here in Silva is 540 AM or 105.7 FM. The one in Bryson City is 94.1 FM. I've got those numbers down now. <laughs> <laughs> She's got it all down pat, right? We want to get those numbers out there because there, that's you're talking to a girl of my heart. I'm a classic country girl. Uh, I like the old. Uh, I'm a my favorite artist was Tammy Wynette. Uh, oh. So uh, you know, there's no other Tammy out there. Stand by my man, <laughs> right? Well, that's one of the songs that I, I you know I grew up on. But as I got older, it was apartment number nine and uh, I don't want to play house and all of those ones, right? Good old storytelling through music. Oh, um, that's it. The stories that country music tells. There are some good songs out there that just, you know, you can relate to and the ones that make you cry. Absolutely. So who's your favorite, Janice? Oh, my. I always liked Marty Robbins. Oh, he's good, too. Yeah. <laughs> But um, and we get to represent the station at lots of times, though. I enjoy that part of the the job, like at festivals and that kind of thing. And like uh, just last week, they had here in Bryson City what was called the Singing in the Smokies, uh, mm -hmm. gospel music that people from all over the country come here, and uh, they have it every night over the July the Fourth holiday weekend. And we got to represent the station while we were there. Um, so it's, it's, it's interesting to be a part of the community and support different things that go on like that. I really, I really like the, the flow of the tea tonight because it's bringing in reading and arts, music and tradition and classic and history all in one, right? And it's making yes. a really beautiful cup of tea here. Uh, you know, these are things that we need to start bringing back to the table so that we can understand real storytelling, you know, and understand one another as human beings as well and have some more compassion for one another. Uh, I love that, you know, reading, storytelling and words, numbers, it all goes together, right? It makes a good pot of tea, uh, you know, 
if you add one lump of sugar and two creams and in, in the pot you know you got one two three so there's a you know a way of bringing in numbers and and storytelling as well um and the other thing is these our stations are in small towns uh, Silva and Bryson City, both small towns. And I think there's something to be said for that. Yeah. Um, I've visited cities, but I'm always glad to be home. I love the mountains here, and I love the small town feel. Absolutely. I come from a small northern town, and where I am now, it's a semi-city or community. It's a larger. Uh, I come from a small population as well, and the connection through music and family time and bonding, you know, uh, I don't feel that in larger communities. I find it's everybody's hustle and bustle, right? Like rush, 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 where the smaller communities take in pace. I find a lot more. So. And we still garden that type of thing. So another hobby. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your hobbies, Janice. Well, <laughs> we've got the music and the reading and <laughs> do the gardening. Um, I uh, sometimes like to arrange flowers. Just depends on what I've got in the garden. I always bring in fresh flowers. But we uh, have a vegetable garden with beans and tomatoes and potatoes and corn, all that kind of stuff. Okra this year, we got a bunch coming in. <laughs> I love to can, put up things, put up vegetables, uh, or freeze them, whichever way. Um, I like to hike the national parks and the state parks and things like this. Whenever traveling, I always love to try to find a trail that we can follow. It's always interesting to do that. And the other thing about teaching, I taught about a lot of places, but now that I've retired, I've gotten to see a few of them, and that's kind of nice. So, and Janice, you talked about canning. So, is like canning pickles and meats and stuff like that? Mostly vegetables, beans, and uh, tomatoes, mostly. I, you know, I had a guest, uh, I think it was season three or maybe it was season four and she created, her and her husband created a cookbook, which I have here and they have some really cool canning recipes in there. Um, so I'll have to send you that and that sounds tea time is done. So connect you guys. You might have some cool recipes to share. Right? That's what Miss Liz does. Miss Liz connects her guest. Um, I, I did experiment a little bit the past few years and made some things I hadn't done before. Actually made some salsa. Turned out pretty good. And some uh, uh, apple butter. Love that. Oh, apple butter. I haven't had that in years. Yes, that's one of the things I had as a kid, but now it's kind of fun to make. Yeah, you're bringing back good memories. My grandma used to make apple butter. But you can smell it too, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> I can go taste it. Oh, all that, yes. All that so, Janice, so let's get back to the Bible stories before we, we're almost at the end here. I want to get back to the story. So if anybody wanted to get that book, where could they purchase this book? Okay, it is definitely available from the publisher at Westbow Press. It's on Amazon. And it is also at Barnes and Noble. And I was hoping it'd be on the website. I can go ahead and give you that address because it will be up soon. And it's called JaniceBBooks.com. Let, let, let me just get that into the comments here and I'll get that up so people can check out that website. So Janice. B, the letter B, books.com. B books.com i'm going to put it up let me know if it's right if there's anything i need to fix then i'll fix it uh let me get that up there for everybody so did i do it right janice that's correct okay so let me go in and put the www dot all the good stuff for everybody yeah, just, uh, <laughs> janice b books.com easy website to remember as well. well i've tried to keep it appropriate to what i do and then i have another book that's already at the publisher and should be coming out pretty soon it'll be similar to the one i have other stories about uh, the new testament so we'll see what happens with it so janice i want to get into your favorite color i asked you what your favorite color was and you gave me the color blue why blue 
I'm getting older. <laughs> it used to be, used to be yellow. <laughs> you know, when I was younger, I had a yellow bedroom. When I built our house, I put yellow in my kitchen. <laughs> but I think blue is more of a sedate color that is peaceful. And there's all different shades of it, too. And I guess right. living in silver, you got to have blue because the high school Mustangs are blue. Absolutely. <laughs> And I asked you to give me one word to describe yourself, and you gave me creative. That goes back to the music, and I like to play around with art. I like to make things. I like to dibble, dabble with paint. I did the pictures in my book. Um, and well, with, with music, working with the children at church, a lot of times we will make up words to a song to tell the Bible story, that type of thing. I like I like doing creative things and getting the kids involved and it makes it their own. So that's, that's all part of it. So can you give us a little Bible song that you use? Uh, <laughs> uh, we did one about Jonah. Uh, let's see how it started. Um, Lord told Jonah, go and preach. We did it to the tune of uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, I think. But God told Jonah, go and preach, go and preach, go and preach. God told Jonah, go and preach. He should obey the Lord. And then we said, Jonah ran away from God. Not like that. You know, just kept telling the story with each verse. Oh, I kind of <laughs> like it. It's so playful. You know, nursery rhymes and poems and songs and jingles. We need to bring all that stuff back. This is going to take you back to the past and have some fun. Well, let me tell you something else. When I was teaching school, I made up, uh, you know, kids have trouble. This is fifth grade with uh, the globe and latitude and longitude. So I made up a song to where, where is that little dog gone? But I put a where, where is that latitude line? A where, where can it be? The lines run east and west, measure north and south, that kind of thing. I put that in the words. So they learn latitude and longitude by singing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I I, I I learned my my four directions, northwest, east, and south, from never eat shredded wheats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that really good to help us. <laughs> that's how my grandma and my grandma would always make sure that we had our shredded wheats. I'd be like, no, never eat shredded wheats. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but that's how she taught me how to know north, northwest, east, and south. Uh, she used to tell me, never eat shredded wheats. And then she'd be, here's your bowl of shredded wheats. And I'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you said never eat them. <sighs> so, Janice, I noticed here in your bio that you also write poems. I have written a few. Not, not published, you know, just for family or friends or whatever. I enjoy that, too. So have you ever published any of your poems? No. Do you, do you think uh, you ever will? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I um, Like I wrote a poem to my husband when our son was born. And um, like on Father's Day when the children were born. I wrote a poem for my mom when she uh, was 80 at her 80th birthday. But I put it to the text of... Uh, the Gettysburg Address, four score and whatever years ago, <laughs> that this cotton up brought forth a woman named Reba, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I've done things like that with writing a lot. It's it's, it's fun to play with. Um, I had a pastor who retired, and I wrote a poem for him. He was all, always very um, playful with the children, with children's sermons and things like that, and we always teased him about Dr. Seuss. So I wrote his poem in the tone of Dr. Seuss. Ooh. And uh, it was kind of fun. I wrote a poem for our choir director when he retired. And I made that to the sound of music. So I build on, I build on known things. I don't, I'm not creative enough to come up with my own idea, but I like to build off other people's ideas. That's why I won't publish them. It probably wouldn't be legal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're personal poems. <laughs> they are personal. 
So any anything in the works for the future, Janice? Any future books that are coming out that you're working well, I, on? With uh, Westbow Press, I've contracted for three. So my second one is at the publishers now and should be coming out within the next month or so. And then I've not decided for sure about the third one. I don't know if I want to stay with the New Testament or if I'm going to maybe, maybe do some Old Testament stories in it. So that's really say. cool. So, Janice, what is your favorite scripture in the Bible? Oh, my goodness. I'd have to say my favorite verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Wow. I kind of tried to live by that. Well, thank you for sharing that. You know, sometimes hearing the word helps a lot. And for my listeners out there that are listening, uh, you know, uh, I hope that you're enjoying tonight's conversation. And be sure to check out Janice's books on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and uh, West, Westbow uh, Publishing, uh, Westbow Press, uh, and that as well. Uh, Janice, if anybody would like to reach you and that, uh, you, you're working with a publicist, correct? I am. To so could you put that out there or would you like me just to let everybody go to the website for, to reach out to you? Um, just uh, that website should be up very shortly. That'd be the okay. best. And so what final message do you have for all the listeners tonight, Janice? Just enjoy reading. And I was thinking if, if we're going to teach our children to read, I think it's wonderful. We can teach them the best book. And that's the other reason I wrote this one, because it needs to be out there. Well, thank you so much. I really had a pleasure sitting and talking with you tonight and getting to know you a little bit more, uh, you know, and taking me back and a little bit of history in that as well. Uh, bringing some good uh -huh. memories back. Uh, thank you for that. The apple butter. Oh, grandma, I wish you were. My grandma passed in November and uh, I miss her. Bless mm -hmm. her heart. But it's those moments, you know, when it's the recipes and the special times. Uh, so Janice, uh, before we wrap up, uh, what special moment would you like to bring into your life this year uh, for the rest of 2024? Oh my, that's a tough one because we just celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary. That was a big oh. one this past year. So it's hard to look forward to say what could be, you know. <laughs> and we also, uh, did a trip with all of our kids and family together at one time. And that doesn't happen often because they live in different places. So I just, I think just being together with family again, just everybody together would be great. Awesome. I really love it. Connection, community, family, you know, and bonding. Let's bring bonding back, uh, you know, uh, and let's start reading to our children. Uh, reading to our children is deeply important and, you know, encourage reading as well. And do what Janice said at the beginning of the interview is, you know, read one page and the next one, read the next. But, you know, 2 a.m., that's a little late. This <laughs> 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 is not encouraging all the little ones to stay up that late. But, you know, if you're with your grandma and or your grandpa or your mom and dad and you're reading a story, you're, you're it's bonding time. So you get away with that one. Um, you know, we've only done it once. So we, we're forgiven. Right. <laughs> and it, it was a special time it's a special moment now uh you know um uh, it's like my little granddaughter said to me the other day i got you wrapped around my little finger nanny and no, i said no. oh i'm not sure about that one and she's like yep <laughs> and i was like oh maybe she does and how uh, old is your granddaughter <laughs> she's three so oh. <laughs> yeah so she she she's got her nanny wrapped around her little finger so um but thank you again, Janice, for sitting and talking with me tonight. Thank you to all the listeners out there. I see you guys popping in and out. Uh, we have a couple of little glitches here. Technology. Uh, so Instagram, uh, yes, it was broadcasting, but it got cut off for some reason. I'm not sure. But again, if you guys would like to know more about Miss Liz or anything like that, about any of the tea times, check out Miss Liz's website at www.misslizesteatimes.com. And also go over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel. Give that little bell a ring and you can watch these tea times at two in the morning when you're done reading a book. So <laughs> we will be back at, on Thursday uh, at 3 p.m. with uh, Brasha Goats. Uh, she's back and it's three times that she'll 
she'll be here having tea. So we're going to really be having a strong cup of tea. And our 7 p.m. tea time has been rescheduled until August 5th because of a hurricane that was in Texas. All of my guest safety comes first before an interview. Uh, so we have rescheduled that one. So you can see that one in August. And the press release will be released in the next 24 hours for my August lineup. So you can check that all out as well. So until then, I will see everybody on Thursday. Same time, same place. And we're going to serve a different cup of tea to you all to enjoy so we can teach educational awareness one cup of tea at a time. So thank you all for joining me tonight. Thank you.